Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, some folks go for comfort, other folks go for style, and still others for affordability. If you wore any other type of clothing every day of the week, we could probably smell you from a mile off. But one, when you're taking into account that you wear a pair of shoes for maybe a year, well, even if you're someone cheap like me, you might consider spending 50 bucks for a higher quality pair, or maybe that's why you have 50 pairs of shoes, so you've got that much variety. Uh, shoes are important because, well, feet are important. And today we're focusing on beautiful feet, or better yet, faithful feet. Our lesson from Romans chapter 10 has kind of a natural progression as it talks about hearing and believing and confessing. And then Paul says, well, what happens next? And his answer to him, it seems obvious, we go. And he talks about this, uh, this text from Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And he thinks it's quite natural and he assumes everyone's going to Go right with him that after we confess, after we believe, after we're convicted, that the next step is to share this good news with the world around us. Well, when it comes to our feet, it's kind of easy to forget about them, to, to take them for granted, you might say, at least until they start bothering us. However, a, a foot injury or a splinter in your toe or even just something in your sock will remind you how important and how often you use your feet. If you've ever lost the use of your feet or your foot, you probably know how defeated that makes you feel. If you want what you want is feet that won't fail you. Oh, wrong way. Feet that won't fail you, faithful feet. As we consider our feet, maybe channel that inner Flintstones or think about the Flintstones because your feet, right, are your everyday vehicle that move you from place to place. As the old saying goes, location, location, location. And where you are makes a gigantic difference in your life. Uh, there's a reason why coaches spend so much time in practice working on footwork. And so let's also focus on doing some faithful, fancy footwork. Uh, in Bible ABCs, it's a Grace YouTube video series aimed at preschoolers. We talked about Caleb this week, and the reason I bring him up is because it's very relevant. Caleb was faithful for a very simple reason. When God told Caleb to walk into Canaan, he was ready to do it. It may not sound like fancy footwork, but simply walking when and where God tells us to is a big part of our faith. When the Israelites left Egypt, they didn't have to do a whole lot, but they did have to walk out of Egypt because God had already prepared the way and they just walked when he told them to. When God parted the waters of the Red Sea, the Israelites just had to walk across. When Caleb and the Israelites were about to go into the promised land, God said, just walk in. I'll give you the land and I'll give you the victory if you just trust me and go in. And Caleb was ready to get to Stephen, and eventually he did go in to the promised land. Apparently, all it really takes to be a hero of the faith is to work that fitness tracker. Well, faithful Christian footwork is walking where, when, and where God tells us to. A lot of times in our life, we come into scary situations in our faith life, and we try to avoid them. That, that problem's too big, God. I, I can't step into that. I, I can't go where you tell me to or do what you say. I think I'd rather go this way. But remember Caleb and have confidence, not in yourself, but in the Lord. He can take care of you. Just go where he says to and you've got yourself a pair of faithful feet. Uh, a, a big part of sports or simply of life is showing up. Even if you're only an average athlete, simply consistently showing up to practice will make you a much better player. In college, 
I remember some of my freshman buddies that I first met my first year failed out after one year or a semester, and it really wasn't a very big surprise because they never or barely ever went to class. They never showed up, and so I don't think anybody was real surprised when they weren't there the next semester. Uh, one of the biggest reasons people get fired is for not showing up or showing up late. You see, showing up is half the battle. And showing up for the Christian faith is practically half the battle as well. Um, perhaps the most obvious place to show up is simply uh, showing up at church. Um, Right, you show up or the bears will get you. No, it's, it's even if you're only paying half attention when you come to church, chances are God can still use that. Now, I'm not saying only pay half attention, but just showing up is half the battle, right? Um, and while you really should show up to church, that's not really our focus for today. Rather, we're focusing on the fact or where we ought to be or where our church ought to be going not in coming to this building, but where we ought to be going when we leave this building. For starters, uh, I think that right here in Westwood is exactly where we ought to be. I think God has a plan and a reason, and I think there's lots of even we plan, things we can figure out without needing uh, any more direction than God's word, that there's lots that we can be doing here uh, in Westwood. There, there needs to be churches all over the world, right? They need to be in the country, they need to be in the suburbs, and everywhere else, but I'm, I feel grateful and I'm happy to be here in the city. And I wish we could plant even more LCMS churches uh, in the city. But while, we, while we're here, we shouldn't just uh, twiddle our thumbs, right? It's I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying, I'm not saying the important thing is to drive here to this location, although, like I said, it's, that's a good thing. But we've actually got to j not just have church here in Westwood, but be here in Westwood. And I think we are. I think, you know, we always got room to improve, but I think we are here and we're doing stuff. And that's, I believe, what God wants us to be doing. Jesus tells us to love our neighbor, right? That's like, pretty essential when Jesus says, oh, well, if you just have to have two commandments, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. It's, it's more complicated than that, but if you want to boil it down to two, those are the two. Well, it's kind of hard to love your neighbor if you never talk to them, right? If you never see them or interact with them, how in the world can you possibly love them very well? Uh, I'm in the, you know, the very literal sense of the word. I'm very fortunate in my home to have some really great neighbors, um, but I didn't realize that because we didn't talk for talk a whole lot for a while. It wasn't until, well, my tree fell in my neighbor's yard that I realized how great and thankfully forgiving uh, my neighbors were. Uh, so maybe, maybe you aren't as lucky as me, and maybe you don't have great neighbors. But even if you don't have great neighbors, you can certainly be a great neighbor. Um, it's also important to remember as we talk about our feet that God can guide us uh, wherever we go. Wherever our first steps lead us, the Lord can be there with us. Just this last week, again, I bring it up because it's relevant. We've been doing a Bible 180, which is a YouTube thing. It's a three-minute series of all the books of the Bible, and this week was Jeremiah. In that book, the Israelites are punished and sent into exile or at least much of it that's talked about, and then it happens. But even when they are forcibly led off into exile, God reminds them, I'm going with you. You're not in exile on accident, and I've got a purpose for you. There's a very famous... Uh, oh. Uh, oh, where are you? There's a very uh, famous part of the Bible that says, the Bible verse that's quoted a lot, you see in a lot of things, it's from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, what you probably didn't realize is that God tells his people this right after he's punished them and sent them into a, well, Babylonian time out. Um, they are in new and hostile territory, and they are, God gives them this wonderful promise. Um, I've got good plans for you, 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Now, some of these very folks were probably marched there, perhaps in chains. Undoubtedly, they endured hardship along the way. And once they got to Babylon, there was probably some persecution and loneliness at the very least. But God says, I'm right with you there in Babylon. Remember, I've got good plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I'm with you, even though you're not where you want to be. God can be with us. In fact, God is with us, even when we're not where we want to be. Maybe you're not where you want to be right now. Maybe you don't like the job that you've got, or you're frustrated with something in your home life. Maybe you're frustrated with, with Cincinnati, or, or politics, or the injustice of this world. But God's got you here for a reason, even if you don't know it. God gives us a, a money-back guarantee that he can use you wherever your feet are, even if you're not sure why you're there. God's got a good plan for you. Uh, he can help you. He can work on you. And he can use you for his kingdom. You just got to go. You got to listen, and he promises he's going to lead you step by step. Of course, uh, it's worth repeating that you got to listen to him. It's a, that's an important part of that. Uh, and then there are many atta promises attached to that if we're paying attention to him. And so um, since uh, we're talking about feet today, we've been coming up with a challenge every week. We've got a, a, a new challenge. Um, and that's to take a walk. Use your feet and take a walk. There's got to be somewhere you can walk. Or, and with this cooler fall weather, I mean, as long as you've got your allergy medication, uh, there's not much more beautiful of a time of year to walk around than that than right now. And that's my challenge to you this week. Do a, a prayer walk. Now, people may have, I don't really know, I'm not that well connected in Christian service. People may have different ideas of what a prayer walk means, but I mean pretty much what it just says, pray and walk. Um, pretty simple. Be, before um, you... You start uh, walking. Before you even start to walking, I think it's important to say a prayer and, and to read some scriptures to kind of get your head in the right place before you get your feet moving in the right direction. I put some suggestions of uh, verses uh, to read up here. You could certainly make a whole list or do some research on your own or well, open your Bible and start reading it. It practically might work. Um, and then after you say a little prayer and read a little scripture. I mean, I, you can do as long as you want, but I'm just saying two minutes, maybe. Um, then go take a walk. And the purpose of this walk, remember, is, is not just to exercise, but also to pray. Now, that doesn't mean you ignore someone who comes up and wants to talk to you. Who knows? Maybe that's an answer to your prayer. Maybe God wants you to talk to that person today. Um, but... Uh, the key thing to remember is, is to be talking to and praying to the Lord. And even if you're having a conversation with someone else, you might say a quick prayer, Lord, if there's anything you want me to say, lead me. Send me your Holy Spirit. Um, I think, again, it's important to, to be intentional and include a prayer beforehand and read some scripture before you head out. And, and before I suggested it, I tried it at work one day. I, didn't, I mean, I just did a 20-minute walk. Um, and uh, I think it actually, you know, it really helped me even in that day uh, to help me to, to focus on what I wanted to. And as I was walking around, I was praying for a variety of different things. I saw political signs, and so I started praying for our nation. I saw, you know, I know some of the people probably where you'd walk, you might know too. I saw houses of people I know, and so I prayed for them. And uh, I was trying to be... Uh, thinking not just of what I was doing, but of what the Lord might want and of, what the Lord, and of God's kingdom. And again, I wasn't that complicated. It didn't take me more than a half hour to do the whole thing. Um, and I, that's my challenge uh, to you this week is to take a walk and have a, say a prayer and read a scripture beforehand and do some praying 
while you walk. And you might be inspired uh, to people to, to pray for or maybe even to talk to and might help you uh, focus. I, I, I suspect that God will do something. If you give him 20 minutes or a half hour, he'll do something worthwhile with your time. The world, after all, right, we all know, I think, we'd all say, or, or if we're on Facebook, we'd like those things that say the world needs more prayer, so let's not just like it, let's do a little of it. Let's pray a little bit, and might as well get some exercise while you do so, right? The world needs more prayer, and we also, we all, the world needs more Jesus as well. So take a walk with the Lord this week, and always go where he leads you. In Jesus' name, amen.